Hi, I'm Dr. Viral Parekh from Calcutta Academy of Radiology. Welcome back to the case of the week series. This is case number 13. A 37 year old female presented to our hospital with complaints of generalized weakness and body ache for one month. There was one episode of loss of consciousness around two weeks back. There was no associated tongue bite or incontinence. There was no history of any addictions. CT scan was done which revealed hypodensities in bilateral periventricular regions for which an MRI was advised. Here are the key images. This is a flare axial image. You can see the multiple hyperintensities in bilateral periventricular white matter. This image also shows similar findings of bilateral periventricular hyperintensities on flare images. In this image, we can see flare hyperintense areas in bilateral centrum semi oval. On T2 weighted images, we can see periventricular hyperintense areas. On T1 weighted images, the same lesions are hypointense. On T1 weighted sagittal image, we can see that there is marked thinning of the body of corpus callosum. The rostrum and the splenium of the corpus callosum are relatively spared. On T2 weighted sagittal image, we can see that there is marked thinning of body of corpus callosum, and besides that, there are few ill defined hyperintense areas within the affected body of corpus callosum. So, to summarize the MRI findings, there are areas of low T1 signal intensity and high T2 and flare signal intensity in the body of the corpus callosum extending into the adjacent white matter. These lesions do not have any mass effect. There is marked thinning of body of corpus callosum. So the final diagnosis is Marcia Fava Bignami disease. Marcia Fava Bignami disease is a rare neurological disorder primarily affecting the corpus callosum and has strong association with chronic alcohol consumption. It is occasionally seen in patients who are non-alcoholic. However, this particular patient was also non-alcoholic. It is generally accepted that the disease is mainly due to a deficiency in the vitamin B complex. And although many patients improve following administration of these compounds and others do not and some die from the disease. At first, Marcia Fava Bignami disease was thought to affect individuals living in the central region of Italy and consuming large amounts of inexpensively manufactured Chianti red wine. It is now known that the MB occurs worldwide and that all alcoholic beverages are implicated. Most patients are male between 40 and 60 years of age and have a history of chronic alcoholism and malnutrition. Other white matter tracts such as the anterior and posterior commissures and the corticospinal tracts may also be involved. Lesions may also be found in the hemispheric white matter and in the middle cerebellar peduncles. The subcortical U fibers tend to be spared. The disease can follow one of three clinical courses a fulminant acute form. Patients present acutely with mental confusion, disorientation, neurocognitive deficits, and seizures. Muscle rigidity and facial trismus may be severe. Most patients presenting with the acute type of Marcia Fava Bignami disease will go into coma and will eventually die. There have been reports of survival after acute onset with a fairly good recovery after vitamin B complex substitution. Subacute type of Marcia Fava Bignami disease is characterized by dementia, dysarthria, and muscle hypertonia. Patients may survive for years. Chronic forms of Marcia Fava Bignami disease are characterized by a chronic dementia. Patients with a Marcia Fava Bignami disease may also present with hyponatremia. Differential diagnosis of the lesions involving the corpus callosum and may have a similar appearance include infarctions, shearing injuries, demyelination process, and Wernicke's encephalopathy. 
The Wernicke's encephalopathy shows abnormal signal intensity and contrast enhancement in the mammillary bodies, periaqueductal region, and the walls of the third ventricle. Whereas Marcia Fava Bignami disease does not show any contrast enhancement and there is no involvement of the mammillary bodies. Acute pontine myelinolysis is also another differential diagnosis which presents with abnormal T2 signal intensity in the base of the pons and when extrapontine lesions are present, they generally involve the deep gray matter structures that are surrounded by white matter such as the basal ganglia. That's all for today. Thanks a lot for your kind attention. Wish you all a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. See you soon.